sell them to the SMB, the small business people, people who may even own the business. How do you get into them and how do you sell what they perceive as just a commodity, something that they may only do every couple of years or update, things like website and small business marketing. This may not fit into what you're selling, but the challenge does. It's how do you get that meeting? How do you get that conversation started? And how do you build relationships that will last for the years and become a reference for you? We all have to do that. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I think you're really going to like this. This is a podcast listener and a, a rep that's having quite a bit of success. Before we get into it, I want to make sure you're checking out our friends over at CoVideo. I did a episode with a rep from CoVideo. Check it out a couple weeks ago. You might like that. Also, people have been asking, hey, uh, have some students on from the classes. We did that a couple weeks ago, too. So make sure you're checking out the other episodes. If you prefer, you can watch them on YouTube. Just search Brian Burns Sales on YouTube. And I'll sum up what's going on in the courses at the very end. Let's get into the interview. Hey, Jeff. Welcome to the show. Is where you're getting started. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a sales executive, and I do basically marketing for small to medium-sized businesses in the East Texas area. Yeah. What, what do you sell? So we do solution selling. It's basically I go to a business and identify what their needs are, and then we provide digital solutions to get there. So websites, SEO, search engine marketing, anything that takes them to where they want to be. Yeah. So who are you selling to? Small, medium-sized businesses? <laughs> yeah, so today... Uh, Not today, but I'm, in general. <laughs> well, to give you an idea, yeah. today um, I'm dealing with a, a golf cart dealership, and then um, I'm dealing with a prosthetics company, and then later today I'll be dealing with a dentist. So it's it varies. It basically, we fill the gap between the small guys that um, kind of do it themselves, can't really afford to do it. And, you know, the bigger companies that can do the boutique stuff, you know, it's, yeah. so we're filling the gap in between. Okay. And what's your territory? I, I do all of East Texas. Yep. So it's, it's basically between Dallas and Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. And what's the hardest part of the job? Oh my gosh. So we sell to just businesses and, you know, being a, a small business owner uh, previously, it's incredibly difficult not only to sell somebody who owns a small business, but to get their attention. Yeah. In our industry, literally, you'll talk to somebody and 10 other people have called this person that day for exactly what we do. <laughs> it's extremely difficult. And you really have to be relevant and you have to be to the point and you have to be knowledgeable for them to even pay attention. Yeah. So what's your approach? <laughs> so I, uh, you know, my, my boss... Uh, is a very good mentor for me, but you know, he says that people have, you know, either talent or grit or a mixture of both. <laughs> what I try to do is I try to approach it a little differently. Um, much of the dismay of my manager, I kind of ignore, you know, the KPI approach and I pick and choose who I go after. Yeah. So I look for, for the customers that have the biggest ROI and the biggest need. Then I do research about them. And as I walk in the door, I already know the decision maker's name. I already know what they want to do with the business. I know what they're advertising uh, in. And I also know what they want to sell, right? So it allows me very quickly to get that guy's attention and to at least get a chance to pitch. Yeah. And, and how do you find all that out? You know, there's a lot of markers across the internet that we can use. Um, I've been lucky to work for a company that's invested heavily into research. And so we have a lot of information at our, our fingertips. But, you know, if I'm looking at like a golf cart dealership, you know, first thing I'll do is look at their website, see if it's yeah. up to par, if it, if it matches the things that we think are best for conversion. Then I'll run a report on spyfu.com and I can see what their advertising is like. I can get a copy of their ads on Google. Um, I can get an estimate of what they're spending. You know, I can go to, you know, Facebook and see what they're posting about. Very very often you can figure out what a business owner wants if you just listen to what they're saying. You know, if you look at the markers and when you come in the door, you have a pretty good argument for them. And how'd you come up with this system? You know, my company has been great as far as training is concerned. Um, yeah, you know, I was a business owner for 12 years. You know, if you come in and try to sell me something and you don't know my name, 
and you don't know what I'm trying to do with the business, you're not going to get attention from me. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you can grab them by the neck collar in a way that uh, <laughs> it's really what you have to do, you, you have to knock them upside the head and say, hey, listen, you know, this is what you're trying to do. I can help you get there and this is how, but you got to listen. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I think that's my favorite thing to do with this is I get to go to lawyers and doctors and, and uh, you know, it, I get to, you know, show off my knowledge and then just stop them in the middle of a, an assumption that's wrong. And just, you know, like I, I was dealing with a dentist. I said, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. He said, well, I tried this. I said, well, let's be frank here. You didn't do it very well. Yep. If I tried to pull a tooth, probably wouldn't turn out too good. You know, that's why talking? I pay you. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Because we it, all can pull out teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'll have to tell you. Uh, <laughs> let's not go there. I might faint. Yeah. Yeah, my I hear dentist stories all the time, so yeah, I, I don't want to hear any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, but if you can, if you can get their attention and know what their objectives are, and and really, in essence, when you bring it back to sales, it's it's solution based selling. You build a rapport by having this little bit of knowledge. You know what they're interested in. Um, you know what their problem is. You point it out, and then you give them a solution. And what type of price point do you, are we talking about? Is it a monthly retainer? Is it a one-time yeah. thing? No, ours is a, a monthly. So I, I do a mix 50-50 between account management and business development. Yeah. So, you know, depending on the rep, you know, we can have accounts that bill as little as $200 a month. Um, my billing is on average, you know, $1,500 and up. So yeah. I think my one of my highest... Uh, highest ranking accounts is I got two counts around the $10,000 a month mark for, for marketing. Sounds like a hard sell. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> think about it. So first off I'm in East Texas and, and so we are in the wild, wild west of digital marketing and a lot of people, even professionals don't understand the value of it more or less how to use the internet. So, okay, here I am coming in asking for a lot of money for something that they don't understand. They can't touch, they can't feel, yeah. and, and you can't make any promises because it's, it's, it's marketing. Right. But if you can show them the data, give them referrals, have the confidence in the product and the product knowledge, really what I'm selling is confidence in me. Yeah. How long did it take you to come up with what I, what I call like a detective model? Where, <laughs> right, because you're, you're not yeah. go, doing the KPI thing, which is I think what most people would try. So, you know, I'm very analytical and, and the way that I approach sales is, is like anything, you know, I, I keep hitting, you know, closed doors and I keep pounding until they go down. Um, but, but I went through the training and, and we had kind of a general uh, approach that they've seen working. And I, I, you know, used that religiously for about, you know, two months. And then as I, <laughs> and trust me, my boss. Concerted effort. <laughs> My boss, he pulls up the KPIs and it, I'm like, hey, well, look at the, the production report, you know, <laughs> and then it, it goes away really quickly. But, yeah. you know, I tried that for about two months and then and then I started tweaking a little bit. And what I found is, you know, it's, it's quality over quantity. If you have the ability to do research and you know there's an immediate need and you can, you know, show that there's a good return on investment to afford us. Um, I can go in and make that argument and, you know, usually I'll close 30% of my prospects yeah. um, just because I don't knock 20 doors a day. I, I, I dock maybe two or three. Right. And plus it's kind of demoralizing. You need success, right? It, it can't be at that 1% cold calling right. rate that, and, and I, I get managers one activity and you do have to work. Oh, sure. Right. <laughs> no matter how smart or yeah. how good the quality is, you still have to show up. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And I see new reps that come into this because, you know, I've sold everything from commercial aquariums to industrial power plant equipment. And I would say that this industry, when you're dealing with small business owners, I feel it's one of the most difficult sales environments there is. Right. You have an educated, um, person who, who doesn't have time, who has assumptions, who's been burned before, 
that has 10 other people a day coming after them for the same thing. But what I find with new sales guys is, is they don't take that approach of, okay, I'm going to keep knocking on that door till it opens. and I'm going to figure out what it takes to get that door open. They get frustrated and they back down and, and you just can't do that. You have to have thick skin. Yeah. And what's your approach? Is it email first, phone call, uh, drop in? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I use a mix um, and, and different reps in our company have different strengths. My strength is, is that it's, if I get engaged with you, it's really hard to disengage. <laughs> you know, I, I know what you want. I, I know your name. I know your office manager. I, I know what the marketing is already. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's my most effective, but, but I use other tools. So, you know, here's another thing that people get frustrated with is, okay, if you knock on that door and it's closed, don't see that as a failure. Spend a minute, talk to the gatekeeper and learn well, yeah. what is, what, what interests the decision maker? Um, can you, you know, flatter the, the secretary up front and she can become an ally. I mean, I get to the point where uh, secretaries will text me when my decision maker's in the office. Yeah, nice. You know, so you, you can't just walk into a door or call somebody, not get to your decision maker and give up. You, you've got to use it for, for mining information, yeah. putting it into the CRM. And the next time you have even more ammo. And is this your favorite sales job so far? Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's extremely difficult. It's extremely competitive and it gives me a lot of freedom. Um, but it's also rewarding. I mean, I was just looking at a report from one of my dentists and, uh, they had hired a, a marketing firm for, uh, dentistry. That's all they do is a boutique. And they went to me and they said, okay, Jeff, this is the problem. We're going from four chairs to eight chairs. We're spending seven grand a month right now. How much more do we need to give you to do this? I said, listen, we'll keep the budget where it is. Let's go apples to apples and we'll, yeah. we'll change things if we need to. So they went from an average of around 50 or 60 new patients a month. Our first month was 98 new patients. So, you know, 50% increase. Um, now we're a year and a half with them. And in January we had 108 new patients. Yeah. Um, so it's gratifying to see success and seeing a business grow. So yeah, I mean, this is awesome. I love it. Cool. And tell us kind of how you've evolved as a salesperson versus like the first year to now. Hmm. Well, I've always been a salesperson. Um, always had that, that drive. Um, you know, I think as I've progressed, I've learned that, you know, you just have to go with as much confidence as you can. And, and when you get knocked down, you can't take it personally. You got to learn from every mistake. Right. And so I, I've progressed a lot um, in my job. Now I'm one of the top guys and I get a lot of joy of, of trying to give advice to the guys that are coming up Yeah, um, because I've been there. It, it's pretty tough to go to a different industry. But, and and yeah, what do they, well, what do you see them doing wrong? Oh boy. You know, the biggest <laughs> thing. <laughs> what do you see them doing right? <laughs> the, the fundamental thing that I see them doing wrong is that they're, they're selling a product and they're not selling a solution. Yeah. If, if you can't solve a problem, if the business owner can't see value very, very quickly, they're going to stop talking to you. They, yeah. they don't care about website traffic. They don't care about Google clicks. Uh, we talk in, okay, golf cart sales, uh, rentals, um, you know, uh, dental implants, which is a twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 procedure. That's the terms that I talk to them in. I have to translate. And these other guys that just, um, they're just so quick to, you know, tout a product and, and right. you got to talk in gotta, their language. You got to translate. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll deal with a golf cart dealer one way. And then when I go talk to a dentist or a series of criminal defense lawyers, I, I talk a little differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and have you decided to kind of hone in on certain either verticals or horizontals? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's another thing that I see wrong is that people don't qualify the leads that they're spending time on. Yeah. I'm not going to spend any time on a nail salon that wants to balk about 300 bucks a month. I'm not going to do it. It's not worth my time. Right. Um, I only go after the big stuff. So I go after anybody that I see as a large ticket items that have value and immediate need is, is what I focus on. Um, air conditioning guys, uh, dentists, lawyers, you know, those type of things are where you're going to see the biggest 
biggest success in the campaigns and also, you know, the biggest ticket items as far as sales. And there's probably a ton of them in your territory. Oh, is that true? About these potential guys? uh, Lawyers, certainly. (laughs) It is the wild, wild west. I mean, um, you know, in my territory, we're, we're kind of in rural East Texas. And then you have like little centers like Tyler. So Tyler's hundred thousand people, uh, people in there. And then, you know, we have smaller communities that come in. Um, you know, when I was hired, they said, okay, we want you to cover, you know, uh, a 50 mile radius. We want you to really beat that 50 mile. I, I don't go, you know, 10 or 15 minutes away from the house unless I have to, which is maybe once a week. Yeah. Because there's so many, you throw a rock, you're going to hit three businesses. Right. And how many do you need to do to meet your goal? Mm-hmm. So I need to get uh, to get to my top tier commission. I need to get two sales a month with a monthly billing of over, you know, I think two thousand dollars in total, which doesn't seem difficult. But when you understand that these guys are so entrenched, um, my, I mean, shoot, when I was selling power plant equipment, that was one hundred fifty thousand dollar ticket item. You know, I'd call up the, you know, the decision maker, which was the C-suite and, you know, I'd have a deal. It was easy. Uh, Here, you know, you have to deal with people that are rational. You have to deal with people that are irrational and emotional. Um, Really? You have to deal with the, it's it's amazing, right? (laughs) Irrational people? Emotional? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the hardest part, frankly, is just getting their attention. Yeah. Getting it. Yeah a little bit of time to talk to them because everyone's hounding them and especially, you know, the dentist and the lawyers, they're selling their time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As opposed to a golf cart place where they're selling golf carts. So I, I want to touch on this too. You know what our company has started doing and, and my company is very progressive. We, we learn fast, we adapt fast. And um, we started doing uh, video prospecting. Yeah. So I'll go in front of an entrenched, business owner. So I'll usually go two times to go see a dentist. I'll get stopped by the gatekeeper. Maybe my charm isn't enough. And so Hmm. everything that I've learned, um, I'll go ahead and make a 30 second video with their business in the background and my face as the thumbnail. And you'd be surprised every one of those, you know, emails I sent out, they always get opened and I see when they open it and I see how far that they watched and they watch my video. Guess who's calling? And me. your business is perfect for that because you you're showing you can show their current website, the changes that you suggest, and the impact that you can have. Yeah, we show when I come loaded for uh, a sales call, I, I have what they're doing now, how they're showing up. Um, I have market demand where I can say, okay, there's three thousand searches for dental implants alone within ten miles of your location, and then I'll go look, pick up your phone, put in dental implant. How many people do you see above you? Yeah. I'm going to go to the first one that solves their problem. My search is done. And that's why you don't see many of those patients. Right. Yeah. That's it. I owned a small business. Um, and the whole budget was spent on Google AdWords to make sure we were number one. Oh, yeah. Back when the AdWords, they were like a nickel. Mm. Right. They're probably $15 today. And just crushed it. Oh, yeah. Right, because people just go to the first one. Yeah, it's it's when you talk about an immediate need business, right? right. So if, if you're a plumber, you know, just think about it. The water coming through your slab in your in yeah, your you're not gonna room, do a market study. <laughs> you know, M- mama's not happy. What are you gonna do? You can pick up your phone and you're gonna look, and the first person that solves your problem, speed of service, quality, offer, yep. testimonial, you're gonna stop. That's the person I choose. And how do you keep the right mindset? without, you know, getting on that roller coaster that we all get on in sales? That's hard. Um, for me, you know, if my mind is in the right place, I'm on fire. There's no stopping me. But, but if I, you know, say if I have a difficult client or if I'm, you know, losing my pipeline to, you know, whatever, you know, it's difficult, but you've got to, you've got to put all that stuff aside yeah. and, you know, put on whatever music you need to get in the mood, you know, maybe some Arnold Schwarzenegger motivational talks. Yeah. And you've got to come in there like a rock star. Because I tell you what, if you come into any business owner in my area defeated, you're going to get eaten. There's yeah. no way. They're going to see right through it. That's it. I, I covered Texas at one time, and I loved it because people were so straightforward. Yeah. Well, that's another issue that I run into is that in East Texas, people are extremely friendly. Yeah. So I'll start a conversation, 
they'll agree to meet with me. We'll meet for two hours. They're like, hey, I'm not ready to do this. And <laughs> that was one of the things that when I first started working here, I couldn't get over. So now I'm very straightforward with them. I'm like, look, you know, I know this is interesting to you. You know, I know you want to grow, you know, dental implants. You know, are you ready to make a decision on doing this? Are we ready to go? Because I'm going to invest time in you. Let's yeah. not waste each other's time. Right. Because you, you, part of your sales process is consulting. You're showing oh, them how yeah. to do their business better. Mm -hmm. And that part's pretty much free, right? That conversation. Yeah. I mean, they do get a lot. I mean, I'll, I'll give advice about all sorts of stuff because I talk into this golf cart place. Uh, I, I do almost every golf cart dealer in East Texas. So I have a lot of insight. Now, I don't share competitive advantage stuff, but, you know, I, I give them some advice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And what do you believe about sales that most people don't believe? You know, I think that people that are not salespeople have this, this thought process of what salespeople are. Um, not, not just non-salespeople, but other salespeople, people who aren't getting it. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you want to be successful in sales, you have got to be a student. You have yeah. got to watch what the guys that are winning are doing. You've got to look at what you're doing and see if it works or not. If you're doing phone calls, record those phone calls. Yeah. You know, you get, if you don't learn, you can't get better and you're not going to succeed. But you also have to have a thick skin. Um, but it's something you can conquer if you, if you have the right mindset. And how do you kind of get better every day? Oh, I'm constantly learning. Um, you know, I'll reach out to other high ranking reps and, and I'll ask them what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I learn every time I do a sales call, I think to myself, okay, what, what made their eyes light up? You know, what, what did I say? What did I do this process that, that made them really sparkle? And, you know, it just keeps coming back to solution selling. You know, if you've got uh, a very, very competitive uh, business owner, right, who doesn't like his competitors, maybe talk about you know, how we can geofence their business. Everybody walks in, we're going to send ads to. Um, you, you got to learn every time. And yeah. so the biggest thing is that first off, you got to listen to the customer, right? I go in with a hole and say, hey, this is the problem. And tell me more about your business. What are your goals? And then everything that I do beyond that point is how to get to that goal or how to fix that hole. Yeah. And, and that's how it works for me. And what's the typical emotion that they have to feel to take action is it fear of missing out is the competitive thing the losing it's it's a lot of things it's with where i'm at a lot of it is fear yeah. they're, they're they know that they need to do digital but maybe they hired the radio station who i'm taking a lot of money from who just started doing digital in their basement maybe they paid them some money and they had a bad experience right. um they don't understand it. They don't have time to learn it. Frankly, it moves so quickly. I they can't, can't keep up. It. The biggest thing for me is just to instill confidence that I know enough about your business and where you want to be. And I know enough about the tools that I have to make sure this is a success. Oh. Um, that, that's the biggest thing. The other thing is just, you know, people want to grow their businesses. Oh. And what drives you? Is it winning? Is it not losing? Is it money? Is it being the best? I love competition. I love yeah. being the best. Um, in, in October of last year, I knew that I was going to win the number one spot in, in my region, which was my goal. Um, in October, I knew I had it. There's nobody else to chase. I stopped selling. I didn't sell anything November, December. Um, you know, here we are now, and I'm in a different group of people, higher ranking guys, and I'm competing against the best of the best. And, you know, I sold four accounts and, you know, I think I'm leading, leading the pack right now. Yeah. So yeah, when I have competition and my boss knows this cause he goads me, <laughs> but if I have competition, I do well, but I also like, you know, helping people, you know, I, I like having value and, you yeah. know, here's growth. They're doing good. So it's friendly and, competition. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's enough business to go around. Right. There is. Yeah. yeah. Everyone needs it, whether they recognize it or they, want to spend money on it because everyone's got a business everyone's got a you know a website mm -hmm. and digital's the place to be oh yeah and, and they know it but they don't know how to go about it yeah yeah i mean so i'll i take 
I'll have reps call me, you know, usually once a week and I'll spend usually an hour or two talking to them and helping them give them all the, all the tricks that I have. So I'm not keeping anything hidden, but I'll also call like when I, I got onto the new list with the senior account reps, I called the top two and said, listen, I hope you're not expecting to get that top spot. I'll be there. <laughs> it works. And, and, and so now we text back and forth when we get sales. So it's, it's beneficial. They, they, they do better. I do better because they do I'm on their heels. Yeah. And where'd the competitiveness come from? Were you an athlete in school or were you bullied as a kid? Were you, uh, were you no. a bully? <laughs> I mean, you know, when I get focused on something, I, I just, I take it to the extreme. You know, I, I was an Eagle Scout, uh, you know, I went and got my pilot's license. I had a business, went as far as I could with there. Um, you know, everything I do, I try to, you know, put everything into, and it's just happened to be sales. It's what I, what I get the most joy out of. So it just comes across as competitive, but really it's just me trying to better myself. Cool. Hey, this has been yeah. a great conversation. Where can people connect with you? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's Jeff Morley. Um, you can email me Jeff Morley, M O R L E Y at live.com. I'd be happy to talk to anybody. I hope you enjoyed that story. I, I really liked it because the connection with the community and connection with small business, being able to do small deals that turn into reasonably good deals, that turn into great references. That's really what uh, I try and teach in the course is how to start those conversations, not just pitch, not just try and find them at the right time, but to connect with them as another human being. So then you can ask the questions that expose the pain that you solve. These are advanced skills and nobody really teaches this stuff. That's why I started Start the Conversation, Get the Meeting. The course is just cooking it. And the office hours are turning into great discussions because now we've got hundreds of people focused on each individual problem and being able to come up with great solutions. The other course, Closing the Complex Sale, will help you understand how a complex sale is done. See how other people are doing it. See the ingredients that the pros have to have to close those deals. How internally customers make those selections and how you can guide them through that process. These are skills. They're not just knowledge. That's why it's not so much more than a course and content. It's being able to talk with other people and build a community and see how other people are doing it and being coached and seeing other people being coached through that process. All you have to do is go to b2brevenue.com, check out the courses, and if you're serious, pick a time. Do not pick a time just to chat uh, and make sure you're serious about the courses. My time is super tight and I get a little frustrated when people aren't serious and don't feel any guilt in wasting my time. So just be serious. I do have FAQs in the show notes as well as an email that you can use to send to your manager. And that's it. Just go to B2B Revenue, sign up. Let's get on with this. This is the time. You'll never have this opportunity again. Never. Make sure you're checking out the other two podcasts, Sales Questions, Brutally Honest Answers, and the B2B Revenue Leadership Show. We'll see you next time.